Hey, good morning. Okay, chapter 10, 13th edition is communication in close relationships. And so this is split into several different sections, which you can see here, the first one. So in close relationships, intimacy in close relationships, um, this is somewhat of an overview of intimacy in general. And probably the most important thing to note is that all not all types of intimacy are the same. Um, and in fact, your most precious and close relationship to you may not be your most intimate in all four of those categories. You may have somebody else that you are intellectually intimate with, that you can challenge each other's thinking and, and really pursue some deep intellectual um, explorations that are, you know, and that's not somebody that you're physically <clears throat> intimate with or emotional. In terms of gender, uh, women have as a high priority emotional intimacy and men it's the shared activities and the physical intimacy. In terms of cultures there's definitely some cultural variations. Now interestingly enough the variations do not deal with whether or not people in that culture experience the emotion but simply on the expression uh, of those emotions. Social media, interesting uh, question that's here on the slide. Do you agree that relational intimacy can develop more quickly through mediated channel than, than through face-to-face -face communication? Part of that comes from the anonymity in some social media that people can self-disclose because they aren't physically present um, with each other. So, you know, how much that correlates to intimacy is uh, a matter of some debate. In friendship, uh, communication is critical, critical to forming friendships, certainly to maintaining friendships. And your book describes some different types of relationships dealing with longevity, what the relationship does, the amount of self-disclosure, the sense of duty to that relationship, and how frequently or infrequently the people in that friendship um, connect with each other. Communication um, is, in friendships is oftentimes interesting when you explore this notion of same-sex versus uh, cross-sex friendships. And that, of course, is going to lead to the, the dialogue or the, the topic of friends with benefits, you know, simply when you have a friendship that involves sexual activity. So interesting um, research that's done on FWVs and different um, considerations that influence that. In terms of social media, uh, many, many, many people now use social networking to maintain current relationships, to get in contact with old relationships. Uh, yet overall, when you look at the friends list um, that you know somebody has in a Facebook account or something like that, um, only a very tiny percentage of those are actually close relationships. However, we do interact uh, with all types of relationships, really close ones and those that we aren't as close with with by using media you know whether we text each other whether we blog um, you know things like that and here are some characteristics of commu uh, successful communication patterns uh, in positive relationships within the family uh, here it's defined note the definition it says nothing about a father or a mother uh, it's more about the substance of the relationship and um, some critical variables. So you can read this. Communication is critical within family. People create their own family narrative. You have your own sort of family mythology that is created. You know, well, this, we are the Smiths, and the Smiths never quit, or or whatever. And you use family to teach um, morality. You teach uh, social interaction you teach world views and all of those things are passed down within the family. Culture is passed down in the family. Every family has different rituals and different rules. Um, those can be based on particular uh, holidays or events or celebrations like birthdays or religious holidays. They can be based on um, communication rituals can be based on this is how you talk to grandmother. This is how you you talk um, to your father. This is the way you speak and um, certainly within that includes the topics that are discussed. In terms of families as communication systems, uh, this has the, I the idea when we talk about a system, it's what that second bullet is, that the family is more than the sum of, a par of its parts. 
Systemic theory argues that one plus one equals three, that putting the, the two together is greater than the sum of the part. So if we were to look at all of the Smiths, that's more than mom, dad, and Bob and Sue. Okay, it's, it's more, um, and that that family system operates within a larger, you know, family system where it's dad's family or mom's family or, you know, a generation and so on and so forth. And there are different um, elements of the family communication when they look at uh, conversation orientation, that's that open climate on a wide variety of topics. Conformity is how much you are required to agree with whoever the power person is in that family, whether it's the father or the mother. So there are communication patterns in every family, and it's useful to consider what are the communication patterns in your family. So certainly uh, you can take those two variables of conversation and conformity and create um, and put them together and you'll get this little matrix of four different categories of consensual, pluralistic, protective, and laissez-faire. So take a moment and think about what those are. So effective communication in family is one that, that navigates the connection autonomy dialectic. And this is critical when, when kids become adults. And so you have to allow them the freedom to be independent and be their own person and yet still um, maintain that level of integration and connection. And so it can it's done very easily for some people. Some people jump too far into the autonomy. Some people hang on too much and there's too much connection. So it can be a challenging stage of life that uh, either many of you have just gone through or you may be still in the middle of it. Uh, in terms of how do you handle maintaining closeness and intimacy while you respect each other's boundaries, and there's there's um, unhealthiness on either side. If you don't have any separation, then your family gets too enmeshed. There's too much, and people aren't developing their own personality, their own um, life. Disengaged is everybody's a little bit so independent, almost too soon, and has very little sense of commitment. And so their suggestions are given in the textbook of how to create boundaries that will help you to do that. Uh, encourage conforming messages. This is critical, especially when dealing with children, because how families communicate affects self-esteem, which will then affect their communication for the rest of their life. In terms of romantic relationships, we have the triangular theory of love, which looks at intimacy, passion, and commitment. So commitment is defined here on this page, and it's important both in the linguistic language point of view, but also in the action point of view. Affection uh, is the degree to which people feel cared for. It typically is connected to physicality, whether that's touch, hugs, or sexual activity. And effective communication and romantic relationships, it's important to understand the variation of the different types of love languages. Uh, I've been in conversations with a couple going through a tough time and he is like, how can she say I don't love her? Doesn't she know I remodeled the kitchen for her? I, I changed the oil in her car. Um, you know, I do this, I do that. And so his love language was acts of service. And she is like, but he never tells me. He, he never expresses anything in her love language was words of affirmation. So they're both trying to express or feel loved in their own love languages and completely oblivious to the fact that their partner spoke love in an entirely different way. So it's a unique um, philosophy comes from um, a researcher by the name of Chapman, I think is the last name. Anyways, great book, by the way, on that, that subject. Social media, last slide here. Uh, and it's just basically the admonition to be very careful of your social media. It can help, um, but it can also be very destructive. And so it's important that you um, are sensitive to your partner's feeling about social media. So that's it for uh, Chapter 10. I'll see you online.